Have you wanted to make the Kitchener cast on for socks? Or maybe you're making a circular bag that you're going to tie together like an envelope and it's straight and flat off of the bottom. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make the Kitchener cast on, whether you are using a regular sock loom that's already made for doing that, or a round loom, or how about a flexible version <laughs> where they all move, or maybe even another sock loom that's rectangular in shape. So no matter the shape, I'm gonna show you how to make the Kitchener stitch today here on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. For written instructions on the Kitchener cast on, please click down in the video description and the links below. You can also get a right and left-handed video tutorial link uh, down in the description below. Now the right-handed is for people who work clockwise going around the loom in a clockwise motion once you get working in the round and if you're left-handed that is for working uh, counterclockwise and generally that's because it's easier to purl in those directions uh, when you get going. Um, if you're right-handed you tend to purl that way. So if you want the right-handed clockwise to go there and the left-handed counterclockwise go there. Okay so you're going to need your yarn and of course your loom and at least two stitch markers and we're gonna be marking something called peg one and the middle peg and then if you want to pre mark out short rows if you're doing sock knitting you can go ahead and do that um, we will have links and charts to um, different sock looms and um, what you need for that in a um, tutorial and blog coming up so be looking for that on goodknitkisses.com and um, I'm going to show you how to work with this custom Cindy Wood loom with the marked out pegs already because I think visually it's easier to show you. I do want you to see what it's going to look like once you get the Kitchener um, ready and on there. And then this is already set up to continue knitting in the round. You can either start and making your short row or you can start just working in the round um, for that. And we'll work it on the Cindy Wood loom first. And then stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to work it on a nifty knitter with unmarked pegs if you're just doing the Kitchener. Then I'll show you how to mark your marked pegs on this loom here. This is a um, adjustable sock loom. There are different brands out there. And then I have another loom that's just kind of any shape really because it's flexible. So as a bonus, I want to show you on our Good Knit Kisses website, we have knit and crochet calculators. And down here, I have a sock calculator. So here's a quick tutorial. Just jump over to our interactive sock calculator and knit yourself a swatch of four inches. You can scroll down here, look at the different shoe sizes and the foot circumference. Um, but I would pay attention more to the foot circumference uh, and not necessarily your regular shoe size because shoe size and sock size is not the same. You're going to want to measure around the ball of your foot while standing so and putting weight on it so get someone to help you measure that and then that is going to help you um, determine what you need for down here so you've knit a four inch um, sock swatch and the yarn and loom you intend to use for width we're going to write four inches that's what we um, knit on our width we counted our stitches in that four inches let's say it's 23 and let's say the ball of your foot measures around now the ball of your foot is down here by the toe it's this widest part here and let's say that you have um, seven and a half inches that you're trying to get. So once I plug that in, it automatically puts in that I need a cast on of 39. I'm gonna round up to 40 in my case because I have a sock, that a sock loom that fits it. And then I have the heel toe section, which is exactly half of that. And then for stitches for the short row on either side of the heel toe section, we're gonna put in seven on one side, seven on the other side, and then whatever number is in between, that's fine. So in this case, it's actually six. So that's what all of these looms represent that I'm showing those marked pegs. For the Cindy Wood loom setup, the oval sock loom has colored pegs on one half of the loom, which we're gonna call the heel toe side, since this is the half of the loom where the heel and toe are worked. And the other half of this tan pegs is what we're gonna call the front side. This is the side of the sock facing up when on a foot, and we're gonna to refer to these when working the Kitchener cast on. So now you're gonna place stitch markers on the first and last colored pegs here. And we're gonna call this peg one and this one the middle peg because we're gonna jump down to step one wrapping and we're gonna place our marked loom on the table with peg one at the top and the middle marked peg at the bottom. The heel toe is on the um, on this side here and the uh, front is on the this side over here. If you're right-handed, the front is on the right. If you're left-handed, the front is on the left. Okay, so instructions are place one, place working yarn between um, peg one 
and the last unmarked peg on the front. So we're gonna go to the top of the loom and lay the yarn between peg one and the unmarked peg on the front. So this one here, and then we're gonna pull our tail underneath the loom on the opposite side and wrap it around this anchor peg. If you don't have an anchor peg here, you can just tie it on. It doesn't matter where, but you can just tie it around the loom right there, that's fine. And this just creates tension for when we're doing our wrapping. So uh, the next instructions are we're gonna work, um, wrap the working yarn around peg one on the heel toe side from the top to the bottom and bring the working yarn around to the back of the loom. And the wrap should be more like a U-wrap knit stitch like this, and we're not working an E-wrap. So we're just coming to the inside of the loom. And now number two, we're gonna, or, I'm sorry, now number three, we're gonna wrap the first unmarked peg on the front side around the peg from the top to the bottom and bring the working yarn back inside. So we're gonna go around that first peg and we're going uh, around it. When we say from top to bottom, we're just trying to indicate that we're going here to here, all right? And now we're gonna bring it to the other side and we're gonna continue wrapping the next peg alternating from the heel toe side and the front side. So we're gonna go around this next peg and go from top to bottom, wrapping around. Gonna go over to the other side and wrap it around the next peg. So I'm gonna bring it forward so you can see what I'm doing. So it's making this serpentine look here going all the way around. So we're going from the front to the heel toe. I like to put it on the table here and then put my finger on the pegs to keep it from jumping off. And you don't need to be super tight, but we don't wanna to be too loose either. So it needs to be kind of taut on the pegs so you can touch it like that. We, it will pop off if you're not careful. You can push those down. Pause your video as you need. Don't forget you have controls to speed it up or slow it down. And just hold it whatever way works for you. I'm just trying to show it different ways of holding it. Okay, we get down to the end here and you can see there's just a few stitches left and we're just still going in order. I've got uh, three pegs left. I'm going around this third peg, the one to the second peg to last, going around that one and go around behind this last peg here. And then when we come around to the front, we're gonna be working the last part. So now this last one is actually going to get wrapped here. So that's our last empty peg. That was step five on our step one wrapping. Now we're on step two, finish the cast on. So number th uh, six, we're gonna push the wraps down. And if you pushed them down as you went, that's okay too. All right, so push those wraps down. And then we're going to start flat knitting all of the stitches. So we put our yarn in the front and we're gonna lift up and over. That very first mark peg is the first one to get knit. And you may need to kind of keep it down towards the bottom here and just do one at a time and push it down so it gets locked in and then do the next ones. And I say flat knit, but I actually find it easier to go around almost like a U-Rav knit and then I can hold on to the loom a little better. And that's all you're doing. So you're knitting it and pushing it down pretty immediately, um, otherwise it might pop off. So go ahead and do that. You're gonna go all the way around, making sure to push them down after you're done. And uh, pause your video, I'll meet you at that point. I'll just speed it up for me.
All right, coming down to the last one, and I'm, I am going to knit this very last stitch because it actually wasn't knit, it was just wrapped only. So go ahead and knit that over. All right, so now we're on step eight. We're gonna cut approximately a 15 inch strand of a contrast yarn to be used as an anchor yarn. And you're gonna place one end of the anchor yarn between pegs one and two on the top of the heel toe side. So pegs one and two here, I'm sorry, right here. And we're going to um, place the other end between the last marked peg on the heel toe side, side and the last peg of the front side, so right here, okay? So um, between these two pegs and between these two pegs. These two pegs are actually the ones that really matter the most to make sure it's placed in the right spot because that is going to be on your heel toe coming out in the exact spot where you want to start pulling and working with the yarn to close your Kitchener. So on this example here on my toe, this area is where my Kitchener was and I had a strand of the dark yarn coming out here and then flipping it over, I had a strand of the dark yarn coming out here and then I could start pulling these loose strands. Um, once it gets about, you know, just far enough down on the loom, you can do it on the loom or you can do it afterward, but I don't like seeing all this hanging down. We'll show you on another video how to close that up, but for now, let's put the anchor yarn in. So you can just use a tapestry needle to um, put it in there. You can fish it in with your uh, loom hook, but just go ahead and put that in and put it down to the bottom. Let it go, turn around and put this one in. All right, again, it's between these first two marked pegs on the short row on what we're calling the peg one. So then just turn that over and tie it. And you can put a knot if you have to, but then you would just end up cutting that. And then you are ready to begin. All right, so uh, if you are working a short row, this is where you would start working your short row back and forth, and we'll have a video on that. And if you were going to begin, begin working in the round, then um, you would just start knitting your piece. All right, let's do the Kitchener cast on on the Nifty Knitter loom. So I'm going to put my two pegs on here, and first I'm gonna start with um, one near the anchor peg. So I'm just gonna place this one on here, and I'm gonna call that my middle peg, and then I'm gonna to count to a halfway point and um, put that on there. So I know that there's 24 pegs on here, so I want pegs one through 12 designated. So I'm gonna put them on this side over here. So this is gonna be 12, um, uh, so we've got 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And so we're gonna put this on the one peg. We're gonna call it peg one. I know it's clear, but you can mark that up on yours. And we're gonna refer to this side or this half as our heel toe side. Whether you're knitting in the round for a sock or not, or whatever you're doing bottom up. And then this side is going to be the front side. Um, this is just for referencing the Kitchener cast on is all. So go ahead and make a slip knot and we're gonna work uh, and place this on our anchor peg. But first we're gonna place it between our peg one and the peg on our front side. So we're putting it in between here and we're gonna go place this down, this tail down underneath the loom and bring it up to the other side and place it on our anchor peg. If you have one if you don't have one then you can just tie it to your loom and i'll show tying it to your loom on another loom so now I've, i pull this and it's not going to come off and now we're going to go ahead and wrap this and you can refer to the written directions now i'm just going to use my own words rather than what i wrote for the longer part so we're just going to pull it to this side over here and wrap around this uh, peg no e-wrapping pull it back <clears throat> to this first peg on the front side all right, and now we're gonna pull it around to the first peg on the heel toe side and go around. So it should look like this. And then we pull these around again and put it on here and come around to the next one and so on. So you're just going to go around each peg 
one time all the way around, snaking it around, and just hold it however works for you. Make sure you're getting every single peg. Now I'm coming to the end, I only have a few pegs left, and I've got it in order. I'm gonna go around to that one and around to the back, and we have this last peg that it now is now going to get covered. So we want to go ahead and knit over this very first peg. And you could push everything down first, or you can do this first to lock it in. So once I've got that locked in, I think it's easier to go ahead and push all these stitches down a little bit. So I'm not gonna jump off. And then now you're just going to knit every stitch in the round, a flat knit or a tight unit, whatever works for you. So you're gonna go all the way around one time, come back to this peg where the anchor peg is. And if you are working a sock, that's where you work short rows. If you are working in the round, you can actually make this your peg one to begin with. And you can even take this um, stitch marker off uh, if um, if that confuses you if you're not working with socks just take that one off and use this one as your peg one all right let's work a kitchener cast on for our rectangular sock loom this one has a slider here it can be any brand and this one I've already marked out my pegs but I'm going to show you how I mark them before we begin uh, this is a 40 peg um, cast on so I've got um, 40 pegs counted out with my slider in place it's going to line up with the last stitch here and we're going to work our short row on this short row here the short side of the loom here and this long side here uh, go ahead and um, start your peg one and you're going to place it this part here and you're going to count to half your number of stitches so starting here actually really helps because it um, half of the number of stitches counted out to 20 is going to land right here and that's one stitch before this slider and the reason why that works out really well is one it's easy to say hey when I'm on this side and I begin that's going to be my peg one and I'm going to go around from knitting my sock there but also um, it leaves this extra stitch here and we can switch these stitches and you'll see that on my sock video and it's going to help you keep this part closed and it's not going to have a little gaping hole so I just want to set that up with you now you're marking half of your stitches you're going to count one to 20 or whatever your halfway point is, mark your first peg and your middle peg, and then you're gonna mark your short row um, pegs. So how I know that is I divide that number 20 by three, and one third of that is going to get marked uh, at the front end of it and at the end of it, and you're going to um, have a middle part. Now it doesn't divide evenly for this loom, so we have marked seven pegs here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we put elastics around those maybe uh, I don't know we, we do five at a time or so and then at the end here I've got um, the rest of them marked and we've got seven here so one two three four five six seven and then these middle pegs here there's six of them and um, those are going to be um, for the rest of our third all right so let's begin by actually putting this on we're going to turn it to where this is the top and you can even angle it like this if it's easier for you to kind of catch in your brain if you want to do it that way it doesn't have to be like this whatever you want to do all right so we're going to take our yarn and put it at the top of the loom just as we did before we're going to put it between peg one and then the last peg on what we call the front side of the loom is the top of your sock and going to put this um, tail down underneath now in this loom we don't have a um, we don't have an anchor peg so we're just going to tie this on I'm going to pull up enough of a tail and just tie it loosely right here, okay? And then we're gonna come up and we're gonna go around. If you need to hold on to this for a moment to make it taut, that's okay, all right? And we're gonna go around this peg one towards the heel side to the inside, and then we're gonna go to the front side, which is this peg, this first peg here, and go to the heel side around and the front side now that I've got a few on there, I can just hold on to it. And you can see zigzagging side to side. And this does the same as it does for an oval sock loom or a round loom, even though it is a rectangle. Because all of the stitches are placed evenly and they're worked in the round consecutively. They're connected.
Oops, I got two of them. Pause your video and slow down or speed up if you need. Coming down to the end, last three stitches. All right, we're gonna come behind this peg here and go in the front. And then we're gonna go to this first peg here and knit over and push down all of your stitches. Okay, once you push those down, you're going to knit all the way around and come back to this point here and go ahead and knit this uh, stitch over and you'll begin here for your short row going back and forth. This is the KB Flexi Loom and it is a flexible loom. You can see me fold it up and everything. They have different gauges and they're the only brand that has this, so that's why I'm saying the brand name. And uh, you can um, usually alternate these dark and light colors. Here I've taken advantage of them and I'm putting all of the dark colors as my heel toe side and all the light colors as my front side. It makes it really easy visually to do it. So I've marked out my peg one up top here and then I've worked out my, um, or marked out my middle peg down here. So as you see, they're all on the heel toe side. And then I've done my um, marked pegs for the short row, okay? So this is the same seven as I did before on the previous loom. And then I have six in the middle that I'm not working. So this is the same gauge as the other looms I showed except the Nifty Knitter. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to um, put your tail end on here because you don't have an anchor peg and it's kind of a smaller flexible loom. So what I do here is I go ahead and make a slip knot, just as I showed on the Nifty Knitter. And I'm gonna just drop this in here. We're gonna place uh, the yarn between our peg one and our front, uh, first front peg. Pull that um, tail up and put the slip knot on the last peg here. Okay. You will want to remove this later on, but this is a great way to just um, get it to stay put. Okay. Now the way that you um, put this on, your, um, your loom is going to move around, so you may have to kind of put your hand back here until you really get, get it going. It's not going to matter um, that it squeezes um, weirdly <laughs> at all. Um, that's fine. Um, I like to keep it as open as I can, but it's less yarn that you'll end up having to waste um, on here. So. All right, so we're gonna go around that peg there, and then we want to come to the front side and go around that peg, go to the heel toe side, go around that peg, and come to the front side, and go around that one, and keep going. All right, so I'm gonna do this and just speed it up for you so you can see my struggles. <laughs> All right, coming down the last three, and you can see it's come around to the front, and it's not ideal, <laughs> but but you've got it, and um, you're ready to start uh, knitting over that very first stitch and pushing your stitches down so it doesn't pop off. And again, you have to knit one round um, for it to be completely cast on. So it's not completely cast on until you knit all the way around uh, to the beginning here, knit this last stitch and then you're ready to begin your short row back and forth. I hope you enjoyed making your Kitchener stitch and I know you're gonna have questions on how to close it up, but we will have a video tutorial coming up on how to make a toe up sock and I will include um, finishing off the Kitchener on that and we'll also make another video that's just closing the Kitchener by itself. So stay tuned at Good Knit Kisses for more videos on knitting. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.